and Jerry here. Welcome back to Onyx Pages. This is yet another installation in what is a very long first haul of 2019. I have five books here. One of the goals that I set for myself this year was to read more science fiction, speculative speculative fiction and fantasy from the Caribbean. So my family is from Trinidad and I grew up with a Nancy stories and folklore from the Caribbean like Sukuya and like different stories but I don't currently read in my view enough stories from the Caribbean. So my first reading of uh, New World's Old Ways uh, which was a collection that was edited by Karen Lord. That was my first Caribbean read of 2019. And now I have some more books that I'm, I'm really looking forward to exploring. So this one is called Land of Love and Drowning. This is by Tiffany Yannick. Okay. I wanted to make this dramatic, so I didn't take it out of the bag. <laughs> So bear with me while I open this up. There's a lot of protective wrapping. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be cute about this anymore. Let me just rip it. That was an exercise. Okay. All right, so um, okay, so I'm going to read the uh, the text on the flap. In the early 1900s, the Virgin Islands are transferred from Danish to American rule, and an important ship sinks in the Caribbean Sea. Orphaned by the shipwreck and the death of its doomed captain Bradshaw, are two sisters, Yona and baby Annette as well as the half-brother they don't yet know exists. Each of them is unusually beautiful, and each is in possession of a particular magic that will either destroy them or become their salvation. Now, as the island of St. Thomas begins shedding its old ways, entering the modern world, the Bradshaw sisters, too, confront a necessary transition. Newly poor, they must not only fend for themselves financially, but also negotiate their new place in the local class structure. As young, vibrant Annette innocently propels herself forward, Yona struggles to put vanity aside and learn the skills necessary to survive, both physically and socially. But imprudent desire is an inherent and inexorable Bradshaw trait, and the romantic entanglements of this generation will have repercussions that echo for decades. Ultimately, as the two sisters grow up, each must grapple with her own unholy love and hope to emerge free without losing herself. Told in a language that evokes an entire world and way of life and love, Land of Love and Drowning follows three generations of a Virgin Island family through the changes of the 20th century, we are with this family through 60 years of fathers and daughters, mothers and sons, husbands and wives and lovers, curses, magic, births and deaths and triumphs. Recalling some of the great magical realist masters of the 20th century, but in a voice completely her own, Tiffany Yannick writes the story of one family while also recounting the story of St. Thomas and revealing a world beyond its glittering beaches. Land of Love and Drowning is a vibrant, gorgeous, unique novel that announces the arrival of a major new voice. I'm really looking forward to this. The next is Xeno Wealth. This is a, con a collection of works by Tobias S. Buckle, and I believe Tobias Buckle is Trinidadian. I believe. I believe. I am not sure. It doesn't say. Um, so there's not much here. It's just a collection of works by Tobias Buckle. Let me just go to his bio to see if it tells me a little bit about him. 
It doesn't say where. It just says, Born in the Caribbean, Tobias Buckle is a New York Times best-selling author. His novels and over 50 stories have been translated into 18 languages. He has been nominated for the Hugo Nebula John W. Campbell Award for Best New Science Fiction Author, and he lives in Ohio. Um, I think that he's from Trinidad, but this is a collection of his short works, and it doesn't say anything more than that. So, Xeno Wealth. That's all I got, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, this one is called Nothing's Matt by Erna Broadbur. A nice, cute little novel. Nothing's Matt is told by a black British teenager. Every black girl. For she has no name until the very last chapters when she is teasingly called princess by her husband. Somewhere in the 1950s, London-based princess is allowed to complete her sixth form final exams by writing a long paper on the West Indian family instead of sitting an exam. She thinks this is a godsend and that all she has to do is interview her parents. Her father tries to help her with his side, but they both find that their kin will not fit into the standard anthropological template. Her father thinks it's a good, it is a good time for her to go to Jamaica and meet her grandparents who can better help her with her study. In Jamaica, much as her middle class black Jamaican grandparents and her parents in England might not have liked it, Princess meets and spends time with her obscure cousin Nothing called Conut. Conut introduces Princess to a plant that obeys certain divine principles and is available to humans to make artifacts for their comfort. Accordingly, they begin to make a mat and as they twist straw and bend it into, into intricate shapes, Conut tells her the family history so that their creation becomes for her a mat of anthropological templates. The resulting shape presented to her teacher earns an A and the comment that she has managed to project the West Indian family as a fractal rather, rather than fractured as the public literature sees it. Her studies and subsequent academic career take her back to Jamaica, but under stimulated by the academy, she chooses to continue the family study from high school and to do so by crafting the information into the mat, which becomes for her a shield against spiritual and physical evil. Making the mat of ancestors takes her into myriad histories of young Englishmen in Jamaica, of Jamaican women in Panama, and of African Americans in Virginia, among others. This work is at once a fictional family history and a comment on anthropological methodology and African systems of thought. Okay, so this is only about 108 pages, but this is the kind of book that when you read about it, you know that it might take a very long time to digest. So I'm going to need, this might be a travel book or something that I read if I have a weekend to myself um, or something like that. But I, I love that. And the chapter pages, uh, they've got, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but a little watermark of the mat that is also set out in the front. And what I like about the cover is if you are somebody from the Caribbean or um, you've been in the homes of people from the Caribbean, doilies and embroidery are just things that we always see. So I love the idea that there is this notion of fractals and families as fractals. And fractals, um, fractals are a concept that I'm learning about through the like quantum physics and some of the work of Adrian Marie Brown and Walida E. Marisha. So I'm excited about that. I think I'm excited about everything. Okay. Two more books. Um, so this is also a beautiful cover. It's called Mother of Invention. It's edited by Rivka Raphael and Tansy Rayner Roberts. So there you go, gorgeous cover. Knit robots, build spaceships, and shape the future. Extraordinary short stories about gender, artificial intelligence, and the art of building something new 
Mother of Invention features the work of Sean and McGuire, oh, Sean and McGuire, Amberlynn, Kwai Mulina, Nisi Shaw, John Chu, Justina Robeson, and more. So this might not be, I think there were a few writers in here that are from, who were from the Caribbean that I wanted to look at and that's probably why I have them here, but there's that. And <clears throat> this is actually the book that I'm most interested in. This is Looking for Living Stone, An Odyssey of Silence, written by Marlene Norbees Phillips. And this, um, a woman traveling alone through time, Africa, and unnamed land searches for Dr. David Livingstone, celebrated by the West as a discoverer of Africa. Through her quest for knowledge and for Livingstone, the traveler visits many peoples, listens to their stories and their silences, and learns about their silence. Suspense, parables, and dreams play major parts as the story twists and turns towards the traveler's confrontation with Livingstone. Looking for Livingstone explodes Western assumptions about the silence of indigenous peoples. This is an elegant and compelling novel which beautifully gives voice to the ancestors to whom it is dedicated. Marlene B. Philip is a, um, a Toronto writer and lawyer. So I'm, I read one of her children's books called Harriet's Daughter when I was a child. And I've read other works of hers and I didn't even know that this book existed. It was hard to find. It was published in 1991. And um, I love the idea of going back in time for the purpose of finding somebody who was said to be the, you know, to have discovered uh, the continent of Africa. So looking forward to that. And Marlene Norbees Phillip, I believe is Trinidadian. So thank you very much for watching this video and I look forward to what I think is going to be the final installment of this massive first haul of 2019. Happy reading and thanks for watching. Bye.